Quality Management Committee meeting of Thursday, June 29th. We'll come to order. First item on the agenda is Innovative Alternative Septic System Municipal Management Framework, uh, upon which a great deal of work has been done by the working group of John and Steve. John is coming, we hope. Whoa. I, I actually have had no contact with him. He, I didn't hear that he wasn't coming. Okay. Well, I hope he does. Since a, lot of, a, lot a lot of his. Of, a lot of his work, right? Yes. But in any event, um, for the nationwide TV audience and the fourth estate, this, this is a project that uh, we have been working on for a while. It, it takes the idea that there's going to be an option of innovative alternative treatment systems that will reduce septic nitrogen down to below 10 parts per milliliter. And the question is, how is it monitored? How is it operated? How is it managed? Uh, we got a grant from the Barnstable County, the now defunct uh, collaborative, uh, to explore this and to come up with a protocol that would lay out how this could be done by a municipality. And that's what this working group has been working on for a long time. It's been sent around to all the members, uh, and we're here today to, this is the first iteration in front of the whole committee. It's been wor it worked on by the. It, it actually well, had an early iteration. It was a meeting you were not at. Oh, that's right. why you don't remember. But anyway, we, nothing, we nothing matched was, it out. We've been beating it up. <laughs> we've been beating it up for quite a while. Yeah, well, here it is again. One more chance. Um, so th this is the latest version. I know, I know Steve has a slight addition to propose. Uh, uh, John was sort of going to be the lead explainer of this, but uh, in the absence of that, I suppose. What's well, we pleasure? could discuss the version that's here yes. because yeah. the extra paragraph it right. will come later and it doesn't really okay. affect this. All right. So you want to go through it section by section? Okay. Take comments and questions? Sure. Okay. Section one. Do you have a copy? Do you need a copy? Uh, I can give you mine, and, and <coughs> I'll just work with Eric. Here. Yeah, I just have mine electronically. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Section one point zero. Use of enhanced innovative alternative septic systems. Should we read it? Or uh, uh, yeah. there's people on TV who, who would yeah. want to know what we're talking about. <laughs> right. Sometimes we have to do really nitty gritty All right. work. This is it. A town may use enhanced IA systems meeting a standard of 10 milligrams of total nitrogen per liter to reduce the nitrogen load entering an estuary from a watershed as part of a DEP-approved DEP comprehensive wastewater management plan, CWMP. And so the significant piece here is that we're setting the standard at 10 milligrams of total nitrogen per liter. Um, because the standard is currently 19, and we feel that there's no sense in doing all of the work for an IA just to get down to 19. You really need to get down to 10. And so I, that's, when this goes forward to DEP, we're, we're basically making a statement. If you can't arrange regulations so that 10 milligrams per liter is, is the bar, then, you know, forget it. And it's also key here to point out that we know it's achievable. Yes, yeah, exactly. That's a very key yeah, right. And that's yeah. a very good point. Thank you. It's not some pie in the sky thing. That's right. right. You know, we know this can be done. We know this can be right. done. We, we know it can be done. DEP has not gotten right. to the stage of saying there are systems that we recognize will get you there. Right. Uh, even though we, we, we see them, they don't. We, we've been talking to them enough that they're aware of what we and others are, uh, have been doing and, and they're aware that this is coming. Right. Obviously, they haven't done it yet. And that's why the West Falmouth demonstration project with the IAs is, is so significant and the monitoring being done by the county to make it credible. Okay. Okay. Comments, questions on, on number one? I, yeah, I was just thinking, um, I'm not, does this, could this possibly require home rule legislation because of, um, it's like with the, with the, uh, in terms of standards, state standards, there's a, a noise standard in the state of 10 milligrams, 10 not milligrams, but 10 decibels 
for uh, 10 deci dBA decibels in the audible range above ambient. And um, the town enacted a bylaw that had six as a standard, a limit. Okay, so the question is, and, and DEP standard is 10. And the town- 19. No, no, 10, mil, 10 oh, decibels oh, for, 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 for the audible. 10 dBA, right. and the town put in now has one of six, which is different from the, but I don't know if that's a, uh, an option. Um, I don't know if DEP agreed with the six. I don't know, but it went through the legislature and the, the attorney general's office and, and whatever on that. So it was just a thought, is this something that, uh, I don't know if, it, if, if, if it's comparable, but it is something that the town did. Mm -hmm. So it's just a question that if we move ahead with this, is that, through a, 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 a town meeting warrant article that would uh, lead to a, uh, a, a change. I, it's just a, just well, a thought. I, I don't think so, only because of the second half of this here, where it talks about a DEP approved CWMP. If we don't have a CWMP that's been approved by them, it doesn't matter what our bylaw says. It was also the spirit of the thing with the noise. The idea is that if every town had different regulations, right. you're driving around on your motorcycle, you have to avoid Falmouth or mm. something like that, mm. and it would be ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, but Whereas here, you don't have to change your septic system when you drive into Falmouth. But, but, the, but it did pass in Falmouth. The 6 DBA did pass in Falmouth. As a, as so a board health you, regulation, right? If you want to put up a wind turbine in Falmouth, you have to keep it under 6. Anyway. If you put it up in somewhere else, it's 10. So it's just, but, it's but I mean, the state, the state tends to mind when it creates a problem being different in different towns. Uh, that's what we have here. So the town of Falmouth also has a bylaw for septic systems the, that says 12. That says 12. That that's says 12. Right. Yeah. Board of and, Health. and the Cape Cod Commission in their watershed reports have enhanced systems that get 10. So I, I don't think there's a problem with a standard of 10 because it's going to have to be proven out in the context of a CWMP. And it's not like DEP has said <clears throat> there, you, you can't have 10. They've just said they've certified 19. So that's true. I, I, I don't think yeah. right. that that standard is bad. We need to spell out DEP here. The first time, yeah. Oh, good point. Department. Yeah, we're going to be consistent. Yep. Yeah, for the listening audience, Department of Environmental Protection. There you go. Right. <laughs> I, I know. Well, we all know. But I don't know if we need to say Massachusetts, too. Yeah, well, that's what I would put M-A-D-E-P. Yeah. Just to, so I mean, if we're going to be consistent. <laughs> right. Mm. Okay. Any other changes to discuss on 1.0? Okay. 2.0, watershed boundaries. The boundaries of the CWMP watershed will be those defined in the Massachusetts <coughs> Estuary Project linked watershed embayment model for that estuary as adopted by DEP and by the town's legislative body. The CWMP will designate which properties within that watershed will be required to install enhanced IA systems. Okay. Comments, questions, observations? Good to me. Okay. Extra space after the slash and watershed. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's extra space in front of the embayment. Uh, hold on, hold on. <coughs> Change the sentence <coughs> on the other. Uh, we are picking what, where? <laughs> <laughs> where? <laughs> where? After watershed slash space embayment, get rid of the space, please. In the first sentence. Got it. Yep. Thanks. All right. I noticed these things. <laughs> All right, three zero, property owners requirements. Owners of designated properties within a watershed who are required to install enhanced IA systems must obtain a disposal system construction <coughs> permit, DSCP, from the town within one year of the start date, see section 4.0 below, and must have completed installation of the enhanced IA system within three years of the issuance of the DSCP and must grant a right of access to the town and its designee to periodically inspect, monitor, nutrients, maintain, and pump the enhanced IA system. 
Okay. Comments, questions, observations, corrections? Yeah. <laughs> Nowhere in this document is the word Falmouth. Uh, True. This, this is a generic. Okay. I thought this, this was to be a generic <coughs> monitoring management structure okay. for DEP's review. Right. That's why we referenced legislative body in the earlier one, right. because Boston mm -hmm. has a council, council. The rest of us have town meetings. Right. Just, just on the word uh, start, is, is start kind of a legal thing? Is it? A start date is a legal thing. It yeah, is? Sec yeah. In, okay. in section 4.0, it, it spells out a little bit more about oh, okay. what the start okay. date right. is about. Uh, any other comments on 3.0? Okay. 3.1, town incentive grant. All owners of designated properties will be eligible for an incentive grant in an amount to be determined by the town subject to appropriation. Failure to comply with the requirements of section 3.0 will disqualify the property owner from receiving the incentive grant. Okay, 4.0, Responsible Municipal Management Entity, RMME. This is a very awkward yes. uh, <laughs> acronym or whatever it is, but it is what it is here. So, the Board of Selectmen will designate a town agency as the Responsible Municipal Management Entity, RMME. The RMME will be responsible for record keeping, inspecting, nutrient monitoring, pumping, enforcement, and reporting quarterly to DEP on watershed nitrogen TMDL compliance. The RMME may engage public or private contractors to perform some of these functions. The RMME will designate the start date for installation of enhanced IA systems within each watershed. Sounds good. What's the, exactly is the nutrient monitoring part that we're referring to? Is it the in the septic systems or in the town water bodies? In the septic systems. We're, we're already doing <coughs> the town water bodies through right. okay. the, uh, the contract with SMS. Is um, the implication here that the contractors could perform all of the functions? It just says some. Would we say better to say some or all? Some and then I would substitute duties for functions because if you have responsibilities, okay. they become duties. Okay. I mean, it's a subtle thing. Sure. But it does yeah. assert some yeah. responsibility. Where is that? What word is that? The next to the last sentence, I would, after some, I would add or all. <coughs> and then instead of functions, I would put duties because. Duties, yeah. yeah. Um, I think enforcement and quarterly reporting to DEP would not be subcontracted out. The town is going to be responsible for that. Okay, yeah, I don't know. That's why I asked. Well, some or all covers. Yeah. I suppose. Some or all would cover it, I suppose, under some, unless you want to get very specific. But by saying some or all, we leave fl flexibility going forward if things may. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Some or all. Okay, any other comments on 4.0? 4.1. Enhanced IA system approval. The RMME will issue a request for proposals, RFP, to vendors of enhanced IA systems who wish to install their systems in the town. Responsive vendors must agree to meet the qualifying requirements of the RMME and to provide bonded warranties and to train local technicians in the operation and maintenance of their systems. The RMME will designate which vendors enhanced IA systems will be approved for installation in the town's watersheds. Is it possible that we would expect certain systems would work better? I mean, is there enough difference between the watersheds that we'd ever end up with a situation where it wouldn't be a town-wide approval for some of the systems? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I'm just trying to... No. <laughs> no, well, think, I, I'm not... Well, what part of 4.1 are you... The very last sentence. Um, it, it would be inclusive. It, it implies in that sentence, once one was approved for use in the town's watersheds. I, I don't foresee a situation. As long well, as they all meet the 10 milligrams. They all meet 10 and, and 10. it's up to the homeowner to decide. Right. right. Yep. Yeah. I, I don't. Good. Right. I'm just trying to look at the, all sure. the possible sure. things that's that's that might show up. That's why we're here. Any other observations on 4.1? 4.2, performance monitoring. 
Nutrient monitoring will be conducted by the RMME or its contractor. There shall be no ownership, management, or employee connection between any monitoring contractor and any system or maintenance vendor. Upon installation, all systems will be considered under probation and sampled every other month for one year. If after one year, the mean or equivalent nitrogen load reduction has not reached the required standard 10 milligrams of total nitrogen per liter, the owner shall be responsible for bringing the system into compliance within one year. Okay. So you get sampled six times. If you, if you pass, you're good. If you don't pass, you have to fix it. Four point three, compliance system monitoring. Following the, oh, here we go. <coughs> Following the first year, one twelfth of the systems will be monitored for nutrients each month. Properties chosen for sampling that month will be picked at random with a random number generator that excludes properties already sampled since the previous September 1st and unoccupied seasonal homes. The goal is to ensure that each property is sampled at least once per year at an unpredictable time. If at any future time a system is found to exceed the 10 milligrams standard or equivalent nitrogen load for three successive measurements, it will revert to probation status and be treated as above. A feature of this plan is that seasonally occupied properties will be sampled during the summer. So I have a comment on this one. Yes, and Steve has a whole paragraph to talk about dealing with seasonal. Which we didn't get out in time. But. Which, but we're going to talk about it anyway since it's relevant right now. Okay. So the, what I was going to, so just keeping with the compliance system monitoring to get that paragraph approved, I would suggest that we delete that last sentence mm. and create a new paragraph that explicitly deals yep. with seasonal homes yes, soup to nuts. That's, that's right. the okay, what's so, so <laughs> we can then uh, move on to, if everybody, if there are no other comments on that paragraph, on the compliance system monitoring paragraph, what we can do is, what, what I would recommend is a new section, which would be section 4.4. So everything would shift down, and we'd, we'd have a new pro paragraph um, called seasonal properties. And I can, or Steve, I, I mean, I can read a draft of that. I'm not sure if it's possible to edit when you haven't seen a hard copy of it. Yeah, we apologize yeah. for this. It, uh, it, it, it was a sort of a work in progress right up until yeah. two, Tuesday morning at, at 8.31. <laughs> and at that point, it, it was too late to be sending things around. And it's kind of the next level that we had talked about, <coughs> let's get the, the bones of this document done, which is what we did. And then what we always do is as soon as you get one thing three quarters of the way done, you start thinking about the next thing and then the next nuance was what do we do with seasonal properties. And so what, we're, what we did is start to talk about that nuance, got to a point where we were almost ready but missed the you know, two-day deadline. But here, let me, let me just read it. Well, if, if, uh, yeah. well, but another option is to just finish this document as is. Mm -hmm. And then go back to that paragraph. Sure, that would work. I think that's that? probably the best. Okay. I think okay. that's probably the best way. Okay. <coughs> All right then. So four point five. So mm -hmm. we're now down, down to four point four. Existing four point four. Exist current four point four. Right. Operation and maintenance. Enhanced value systems must be maintained in accordance with vendors' requirements. In addition to the annual nutri nutrient monitoring described in section four point two, the RMME will inspect the control panel and other above ground components of the system twice yearly, either by means of remote sensing or on site examination. An annual below ground inspection that includes operation and maintenance of the system will be performed by vendor trained and certified technicians under contract to the RMME within a reasonable time following said annual nutrient monitoring. I would put a hyphen between vendor and trained. I am so glad you said that. Well, isn't that what you asked me to do this morning? <laughs> <laughs> Late night email. <laughs> you, you read it just like she wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yep. This is definitely headline news here. Okay. Committee inserts hyphen. <laughs> <laughs> Panic ensues. <laughs> With major effort. <laughs> Okay, let's right. keep going. Also, also deletes space. <laughs> <laughs> Matt and I are on the slice and dice. Yeah, don't get me into that because you have, are you a two 
space after each I sentence. I sure am. And that's, that goes back to typewriter days. It's no longer needed in the word That's what my son tells well, me. I know, but I like it. It's a little catch your breath. Here's a new sentence. Right. I do both. It's well, aside, aside from the hyphen, do we have any other additions or corrections here? Uh, no. Okay. 4.5, pump outs. Septic systems will be pumped every five years by RME approved contractors or as determined by inspection in compliance with 310 CMR 15.35, I think is the title five. Mm -hmm. Okay. Four point six, record keeping. The records will be kept by the RMME for each property within the watershed and will be tied to the municipal geographic information system, GIS. Records may include engineered and as-built plans submitted electronically, water readings from transponder-equipped water meters at each property, nutrient monitoring results for total nitrogen, operation and maintenance records, we should probably spell that out. No, I think we say operation and maintenance above. Did we do that before? Well, I think reading. so. And, and, and pumping record. Did we define O&M before? Um, well, it, didn't, it wasn't defined, but the head of section 4.4 I, I think spelling it out is good. Um, or what we're going to do, because we're trying to do this by convention, um, you know, gram grammatical convention. So what we would have to do if we wanted to do that is, you see where it says operation and maintenance um, 4.5? Oh, right. mm -hmm. yes. Then we put O and M. O and M. Yeah. There you go. We also like you did at the beginning. I think that's <coughs> perfectly acceptable. We also, you're, go ahead, Matt. Where else? Sorry, finish your thought. Yeah, I mean, this is what we did at, very, at section 1.0. Department of DEP. Was we, no, where we spelled at the title of section 1.0, we said Yes, that, oh yeah, okay. Yep. So I would do the exact same it. thing here, just yep. to stay consistent. Consistent, yep. Okay, what else, Matt? I realize we didn't spell out total nitrogen in section 1.0. Mm-hmm. Good point. So I have a question on that. That is a, I mean, this is a nuance of grammar, but it's a mathematical, it's a unit. It's a quantitative term. And so how, how do you do that? Do you put total nitrogen, then parentheses, TN slash capital L liter? No, no I would spell goofy. out total nitrogen per liter, all spelled out, and then parenthetically after that, do you, uppercase we, I have P. never seen that in a scientific paper where the first well, time. this isn't science. This is regular. Yeah, but it's a. Well, be, it is no funny middle ground. To be consistent, just spell it all. But out. someone that picks it up is going to go TN. Milligrams spelled out. Total nitrogen spelled out per spelled out is that, we're not, liter. We don't have a page limit, right? No. No. They can always be retracted. Should I spell out? I'm not going to spell out 10 because it's a bigger than nine. <laughs> <laughs> Although in many terms, in many situations, you would spell out the I, I right. think this is silly, but I'm going to do it. That's the spirit. All right. Capitalizing total nitrogen? What's fair? I wouldn't when you spell it out. No. No. No, no but when you, I would Great. put uppercase when you Good. Put. Well, you know, I mean, everybody's got opinions about things and things. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you can well, Google the, some of them, but this you could never Google. Well, well the, more, the more English and the less abbreviations, at least the first go around. 10 that. milligrams total nitrogen per liter, all small. Milligrams total nitrogen per liter, the way it was written. Okay. Good. Got Are it. We, everyone on board with that? And the B in watershed boundaries is not bold. <laughs> Where? 2.0. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> oh, you're right. Skinny little thing. It does look puny. It's not bold on my version. Oh, you're right. Well, but it should okay, be. Now, that, now that's getting carried away. <laughs> you want to case the B when it says watershed <laughs> boundaries. Here. Oh, okay. oh, look at that. Who knew? All right. Got it. Be bold. Uh, yeah. Are we all set? <laughs> be bold now. You guys are, we all, are we all set with 4.6? We are, and we're going all the way back down to 4.5. Okay. Well, now, now we're that's calling it 4.7, reporting. All right. The RMME will report compliance to DEP quarterly. Compliance may be demonstrated by any of the following. All systems meeting the effluent standard of 10 milligrams total nitrogen per liter. B, some failures balanced against those systems bettering the standard and some properties being occupied seasonal. C, the Sentinel station meeting and maintaining the main, main, mandated nitrogen concentration. Or D, 
the watershed load reported quarterly based on water usage and the moving average of accumulated nitrogen sampling test data for total nitrogen. You said nitrogen twice, right, instead of nutrient at first? Accumulated nutrient sampling? Or did I mishear you? Which, which, nutrient which? sampling test data for total nitrogen. Right, that's what should be there. I thought that's what I read it. Said you can just oh. delete nutrient accumulated sampling test data for total nitrogen. I want to keep nutrients. Every uh, nutrient sampling has become the terminology we use throughout this document, and I want to keep it yeah. together the whole time because I don't want to just say it once and then not say it again, and just for consistency. And and I also think it's important uh, because there's um, the monitoring that has to do with the functioning of the system. So <coughs> nutrient sampling keeps it very specific as to what is mm -hmm. being <coughs> talked about. Uh, I'd point out the significance of B. Which, which does suggest that if, even if you have some yeah. systems that are not reaching their 10 at the moment, as long as you have others that are getting more than 10, you're still okay. It's, it's treating the, the whole area as a single system and not de demanding that each individual system be 100% on board. Right, and no implication that because we're bettering the numbers in some places, we're going to let some of the homeowners get a ride. No, because the other section says if you right, have three continuous so uh, sequential <coughs> no. failures. But then don't they, yeah, I mean, doesn't that conflict? I mean, doesn't that open us up to issues of, well, I'm the only one in my <laughs> watershed who's failed. You know, but you're saying down below that we're compliant because that's offset right. by everybody else well, in the neighborhood. Right. And but it is. Because next year your neighborhood You either have to be compliant or well, not. Is what you're no, 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 you but you can only, you, you can't be, This is for a, you for can't avoid period. compliance more than three times in a row or you get kicked back to probation. To probation. <clears throat> right. So, Which is so there's, you can't consistently fail. Right. Um, so the key is that it's like a, a quarterly check. So you might have failed in that quarter, but you're going to correct it. That's right. That's the plan. Yeah. Because if yours fails this year and you say, well, I want to ride because everybody else is okay, what you don't know is the guy across the street or two blocks over is going to fail the following year. Right. And the other thing is without having this in here, we could be saying to the state, if we don't have perfection, we're not complying. Right. And, yes. and we want to look at the big integrated yeah. picture. Th this That's right. That's section exactly. may not survive a state review, but I think it's worth having well, it there. I will say this section survived Brian Dudley's review. Well, that's true. I, I have a question, though, and I'm embarrassed <laughs> that I didn't see this before because I've seen this many times. A and B sort of go, under 4.7, A and B go together. Right? I mean, this is talking about the systems. Mm -hmm. that they all have to meet 10, but we can balance the good ones against the bad ones. Well, he, he, he either will do. It says either, either will do. Yeah. Well, of course, A will do. Yes. And then B, we're <laughs> saying sure. that's sure. okay, too. Or they're, C they're or D. They will all do yeah. independent of each other. Right. Yeah. Right. But then my main point is, what's D? We're, we're still talking about the systems. We're not talking about measuring anything in the estuary. Um, that C. A, C is measuring in the estuary, the central yeah. station. Yep. Right. And D is measuring the load. And this was something that came up. I mean, John, I wish John were here because this he would explain John's it. This was John's idea issue. that we can have. Oh, oh that's right. 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 I, you, right? Thank you. Oh, okay. I understand. Okay. For the, for the nation. <laughs> so the idea was that there is an effluent concentration right, coming out of a septic system, and that's one and two. The nitrogen concentration in the estuary is number three, and number four is the concentration times water use, right. which gives you a load, and that's a different yes, yes, metric. Yes, 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 you're absolutely right. Yeah. right. Very you may have a terrible concentration, but you're not using much water because you And that's the point of doing these which water is the whole meter point, readings. Yes. Okay. And I would guess, you know, when these seasonal things are fired up, you know, there's going to be some inertia mm -hmm. involved. The thing's been sitting there That's right. quiet for nine months, mm -hmm. and guess what? The first big visit is Fourth of July weekend with the grandchildren and everybody in the house. Yeah. It's not going to work the way it should. I can promise you. If well, you we're measured it that out. day, we're going to we're find, find out. Cause well, we're going to find out. Well, I know we're going to find out. But I'm just picturing the worst case scenario right. yeah. where this has been quiescent for months and months and months, yeah. and then mm -hmm. suddenly the. You know, and we have and like nine systems in West Falmouth mm -hmm. that that is exactly the case for, and yeah, 
day before yesterday to grab samples on all of them and are going to find out in about a week what actually happened. Because yep. Memorial Day was like the big, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah no, it's a very, But, but the I'm balancing thing is, and correct me if I'm wrong, that as George Hofelder always says, the big thing about seasonal homes is that 10 months or so a year, right. they're not putting out anything. Right. And all the, the TMDL calculations are based on future build out, 100% year round occupancy. Exactly, big yes. difference. Big so difference. they're already getting a reduction of yeah. at least mm -hmm. five sixths. Right, that's why D is important. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, so on, on C, you don't say anything about you know what a sentinel station is. So just maybe the sentinel station in the watershed, or for the I'm sorry for the watershed. For the estuary. Or for the estuary. Yeah, right. Whatever. That's true. We, so we, water we, body? Well, yeah, we, you suggested for the estuary. Yeah, that we, might we be. talked about them being estuaries All right. way back the Sentinel station for the estuary, meeting and maintaining. Yeah. Okay. Add it. Uh, anything else on 4.7? Well, we should meet at 8.30 more often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no coffee before meeting. <laughs> I've already had two <laughs> big jolts. Okay, 4.8, fees. Homeowners with enhanced IA systems will be assessed a fee semi-annually for each enhanced IA system that will, the, the fee that will cover our MME costs, I guess is what we're trying to say here. Um, yes. Okay. Now we can go back to seasonal properties? Right. Okay, All seasonal right. properties. So this would be a new section. It's an enhancement to what we're saying. It would delete the last sentence in 4.3 because that's just a sentence and it would turn it into a paragraph. And I'm going to read it and see how we feel. So it would be a new section 4.4, seasonal properties. Seasonal properties are defined as being unoccupied at least three consecutive months per year. Hmm. A goal of this plan is that seasonally occupied properties will be sampled during the period when they are inhabited. The RMME may use its discretion to adjust the requirements of this section for seasonally occupied homes. That's sort of the preamble. For performance monitoring, affluent measurements at seasonal homes will not be made during unoccupied months and will not be included in any averages if it is determined that the property was not occupied when the sample was collected. Probation for seasonal homes will consist of sampling once every occupied month until six measurements are made. If after six samples are taken, the mean or equivalent nitrogen load reduction has not reached the required standard of 10 milligrams of total nitrogen per liter, the owner shall be responsible for bringing the system into compliance within one year. So that's performance monitoring. For compliance monitoring, see section 4.3. That's it. That's it. That so sounds very uh, reasonable. It was very simple. So the idea is a seasonal home has nobody living it. It ha has, um, are unoccupied at least three consecutive months. So that means that a nine, nine months or less is considered seasonal. That was just, right. yep. So two comments. One, whose job is it to determine when the house is occupied? Well, it would be the RMME. So they're going to, how, how are they going to do that? Drive water around and water see use. if the lights are on? Water use. Okay. Water use. Okay. Except water use only gets measured twice a year. Not by this program. Maybe. That's one reason it was proposed. To that was one of the there. reasons why we've got this regular water monitor, you know, the water readings. Okay. So we know. And that's pretty easy for. That's what to we've been saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mo most houses have the electronic, electronic, the electronic monitoring. And I, okay. You can drive by at the speed limit and right. And pick them the, all up. One of the requirements of installing an, an IA is going to be you will also install an electronic water meter, water meter mm -hmm. so that. It can be read by Does the together. water department already drive around monthly, anyways? Or? They do it twice a year. Okay, they only do it twice a year, so somebody's going to have to drive around now. Monthly. Right, but the, the thought was that the equipment is inexpensive compared to the total investment in all of this, and the 
time of driving around at the speed limit is small compared to the labor for all the other inspections. So do we need to say that? Because it says the RMME is responsible no, just, for blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, no, I was just wondering how this was going to work. It sounded like quite yeah, a lot of additional work, but maybe not. It was a very reasonable question. Yeah. Yeah, all, all of this is work. a lot of additional work. Yes. <laughs> There's no question. Sure. Basically, you're, you're putting together a sewer treatment system yep. that has hundreds of locations. <laughs> yeah. And that's, okay. that's a lot of work. And do we want it to be a separate section? Because it's still compliance system monitoring. It's just a seasonal. So we that clause. was why this all came up. It was the idea. I think it makes sense to have a separate section for seasonal properties because yeah. it's a an instance that is right. pretty big for places like Falmouth. Right, and, and they all get they all have to be dealt with in a separate way from the year-round houses. Yeah. If, if you mix it in with the other paragraphs, it makes those paragraphs mind-boggling. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It, it helps the reader, I think, and, and a person who's trying to manage this thing say, okay, what do we do for seasonal properties? Boom, it's right there. I mean, just, I think it's a... No, that's fine. I was just going to suggest, you know, 4.3.1 and 4.3.2. No, 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 no. Whatever. No. Okay. That's what I've been thinking okay. of, trying to figure out how to stage this a little better, because, you know, now you have three separate sections on monitoring, and it would seem in one sense to have section 4.2 entitled monitoring, and then break out. Make it a five. Well, you also... In the, between, but, but again, it... It doesn't really matter. I don't it's all think there. It's, it's all we there. also found out that the seasonal homes are very tricky. Every time we got something that we thought was right, two days later I would think of something that was wrong for seasonal homes. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're all different kinds. At first you think, oh yeah, the people that are here in the summer. Mm -hmm. But then there are snowbirds mm -hmm. that just are here most of the year but go away for a big part of the winter. Mm -hmm. And everything in between. And, and then uh, another issue is uh, the the compliance, the how, how many times do you have to measure uh, to see that you're not meeting compliance? If you're only here two months each year, it, it, yeah. so we put that in one paragraph, and then we put in the uh, that fudge factor sentence that the RMME can basically do anything they want. This is was the first sentence. Of See you red. Okay. So, any further additions or corrections? I just, yeah, I just um, actually a couple of points on this. Uh, one related to this uh, to this proposed new section is, um, isn't it that these systems either reach the standard or don't? Does it matter if they're seasonal? I mean, if we're going to put a seasonal provision in there, I mean, I don't. I think that I'm not sure how it's looked at from the state, basically. And we're trying to put in a uh, kind of a factor that, you know, it could, could be a large factor if there's a lot of seasonal homes in an area. But it just seems to me that either these systems don't make it or not, or they do. And, you know, that's really what we're after here. Not so much. Yeah, but the seasonality of it means as opposed to a sort of more typical steady state system, mm -hmm. which normal seasonal thing is just an amazingly uniform water usage residentially right. across the country, seasonally and everything else, and you've got sort of a steady state system with your treatment system, and then you go back to this pulsed system where for two or three months out of the year, in some cases you've got a lot of water or waste flowing through the system, as opposed to, I, I think it's important to recognize that distinction. Well, I think coming back to your other point, if you have, sorry, Eric, um, yeah, if you right. have, um, if you have two people in the house most of the year, right. and then suddenly there's this huge July 4th party, right. and you have a, people are in there like cordwood, um, you're going to get this, could have, the, it could be a similar kind of mm -hmm. impact, if not even greater in some cases right. than, than others. So. You know, it, or you know, and it's. But I think it's yeah. the water flowing through the system. As long as there's some water there, the system. And again, I'm no expert on how these things work, but I've got to think if it's more or less wet for a long period of time, it's got some microbial water flowing through. Might, even if it's a small fraction of what it might receive over a holiday weekend in the summer, you're going to have 
substantially different performance than if it was allowed to dry up for right, a number of years. It's microbial based, and if suddenly you've got a huge inflow, right. regardless, it's those microbes aren't going to. Oh, I know bloom they're not going to so instantly quickly. bloom yeah, and take right, care right, of that. Right, but. but I'm just, yeah. But that was one point. The other one is coming back to 4.7. Sorry to go back to that, but I I think that that section C uh, is related to this. Is that perhaps we're looking at these systems, and if we're, we're suddenly bringing in the Sentinel station monitoring. And it seems to me that there, there are a lot of factors that affect the Sentinel Station reading. Um, and so therefore, is it, should this be in here, or does this add a complexity? If the systems work as, a, as intended, what does 4.7c, 4, 4 how is that relevant? In other words, I know we're trying to reach a, a TMDL, but the thing is, is that in this case, it seems to me that the systems are all running perfectly, so that's what people need to know, right? I mean, that's really the So the, that the nutrient point. monitoring is monitoring the system, not the Sentinel station. Right. And are you talking about record keeping? 4.7 reporting, 4.7C. The Sentinel station oh. meeting and maintaining the mandated nitrogen yeah. concentration. Well, that, that, just, excuse me, yeah, that right. just preserves our luck. Yeah, right. There's the possible lucky circumstance in which these systems are terrible. None of them meet 10. But for some magic reason yeah. that we don't ask too many questions about, the Sentinel station is fine, which is the bottom line. Yeah, that, that's the, that is if, the if that happens, uh, yeah. hey, that's all we have to do. Yeah, if the yield grass comes back and the Sentinel station is reading no, no, at the below, the, the, below the level it wants, uh, we yeah. want it to, we, we declare victory. We don't, yeah. we, we don't chase everybody around uh, and right. heck to them about right. their system anymore. Because yeah. the only reason we're doing this is to get the Sentinel Station to meet yeah. its standards. And if it's meeting its no, standards... Yeah, I understand the, the objective. I'm just <laughs> thinking about, about what we're trying to do with this document. And this document is, is one, to reduce the monitoring costs. And, and what was the other on the other now? But, that's, well, that's one of the main ones. Outlining our compliance yeah. process is one of them. I mean, what we are going to report is yeah. another reason for this document. We, we won't be able to use IA systems at all as a solution, as a solution, unless there is a clearly a management structure um, that the DEP is comfortable with. And as Eric has said, the, the initial approach was <laughs> you basically have a mini sewer system on every single lot and so how do you, how do you deal with that I, I i like your your term about it being sort of luck if if we yeah, if we seems. meet the sentinel <laughs> sta station yeah. which is the ultimate compliance um goal yeah. then uh, you know we yeah, if, if we have a serious deluge a series of deluges right. and flush the thing out and we reach it i mean sure. And then we're going to say, oh, well, then everything's fine. Well, and even I, though those things are failing, right. it doesn't yeah, matter. Well, that's right. <laughs> there's, there's, still, there's still going to be, there's still going to be <laughs> annual monitoring. It says meeting and maintaining. Maintaining. Right. Yeah. Yeah. For that reason. Right. But, so I, yeah. I would leave it in uh, and yeah. push it to the next level and see what. But Ron brought up, Ron's first point was more interesting to me. And, and it, it, it supports what I was just saying about the seasonal homes thing is a can of worms. He just realized a situation that I don't think any of us on the working group have thought of before. The possible change from low occupancy to high occupancy seasonally. And I'll bet there are a lot of houses like that. There where are. They, where they rent it out to a, yeah. a, a, a house sitter for the winter and go away. And then the whole extended family comes in for the summer. And I have, I'll have to sit in a quiet place for a while yeah. somewhere and think about that. This um. may be the one that doesn't that doesn't meet standards, and the others do. And if the RRME right. can yeah. decide some do, some what to do about and it. And exactly, yeah. that's exactly. why we have yeah. that in exactly. there. Exactly, but that's yeah. an example of why that. Yeah. Exists. And it is supposed to be adaptive management. Thank you. Right. Right. Recurrent theme. Right. Respond. You have to respond, yeah. respond to reality. To the blips. Okay. Well, I, so. I think we have sort of a consensus on the documents in front of us, and not much of a consensus on the seasonal piece. Is that, is that fair? No. No, I, I didn't hear any objections. With the okay, are, there, well, the are there any objections to that seasonal paragraph? I see you read them. Okay. I, I, I would like to see it written down. Uh, I just got one pass. I'm not sure if yeah. I really I agree got it all. Uh, yeah. could, could we maybe adopt it uh, subject to uh, 
taking up the seasonal piece at the next meeting or what, what, what's your plan? So our next meeting is July 29th or right. the last Thursday. Oh. Um, it'll be good to have John here, I think, as well. I yeah, think. Uh, particularly he, on, yeah. Uh, on something yeah. that's neighborhood. Okay. Right. okay. Yeah. Fine. So we discussion but no vote mm -hmm. okay. today. Fair enough. So we'll take it up on the 29th. Good. Yeah. And good I will job. send out a revised version okay. for the next meeting, probably. Right. Well, send it around now while everybody's ideas are fresh. Okay. And the, and the draft of the seasonal piece. It's all. It's going to be in this. Okay. I have a new version that's got the paragraph in it. Okay. And the edits we made today. Fine. And I'm sending it in its, the 29th version. Well, we, you, is there anything wrong with you're that's sending that out right away to everybody on this committee? I'm sending it out right now. And that everyone on this committee would make a good faith effort to email back to the working group their comments, or does that violate the open meeting law? I, I don't know, but we can, we, we, we can have a working group meeting after people have had, seen um, it's it. In can, we'll, we'll, we'll take I think sending well. comments to me would be the right thing to do. If any, I'm going to send it right now. If you got comments, send it back, right? Yeah, I guess then it's, we're not really deliberating. I suspect we're not deliberating. I'm not sure exactly All right. Next item on the agenda. What if you say it's okay? Both of these. Yeah, right. So All three meetings, things. including today. Next item on the agenda. Oyster Pond revised draft alternative analysis. Discussion and vote. Okay. As you all know, the working group's been going back and forth with our consultant on different ways of meeting the TMDL in Oyster Pond sewers versus IAs. Um, we have some updates to report from the consultant. And so let's see if Finnish is doing that, she can do this. <laughs> I'm just taking notes here, sorry. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to do minutes. Um, okay, trying to do everything. I usually I do it. So we talked about it at the last meeting. We came up with a couple of changes. This is table 5.9. This is table 5.9. 5.9. And so uh, the IA working group has met and looked at it, and the committee also subsequently looked at it. And the two comments that came at the last meeting, and I haven't received, nobody sent additional comments on this is that the order of the columns in Appendix G of that document that Ray Pierce sent should be the same order of columns in Table 5.9. And the heading should, uh, we have Plan 1 and plan, plan 5. It should specify in that heading that Plan 1 is the sewer plan and Plan right. 5 is enhanced IAs. Yep. And we want to make sure that we are going from uh, they have the right number of sampling events based on this 112th. So our, the document we just looked at talked about sampling 112th. And so this costing needs to reflect that 112th. And I think it doesn't right now, <coughs> but we just want to tell Wright Pierce it should reflect that one sampling uh, per, year, per, per property per year, which is the 112th. So those are the three changes that we have come up with so far. Are there others? Do you have changes, Ron? Really? Yeah, I, I have a, uh, I sent around some documents um, uh, to the committee, sort of background information. But when, you know, when I look at this whole program now and look at these six different plans that are now in the final options, among the final options, um, you know, there were other, other options that were considered that weren't considered viable. Or shellfish, they won't grow, okay. Uh, um, PRBs are not right. feasible, and things like this. So it's not, right. you know, it's not, those weren't looked into. But so when I look at this now, and I look at the, the one plan that strikes me, because this is based on a comment from Virginia about the whittling down of Site 7 over time. And um, in terms of using the sewer option, it seems to me right now, there should possibly be a footnote in here at least that, that qualifies the situation. And the situation is, is that there's a permit 
uh, for Site 7, which is the only one that, well, the, 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 new, the new one, the expansion mm -hmm. area, mm -hmm. that allows 260,000 gallons per day. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Okay, now this is what, about 25,000 gallons per day additional that would be coming out of here if it went there. Something, something like this, I, I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, 10% more. Well, right now the permit and now the Buzz's Bay Coalition has also, you know, you know stated that, that, that there needs to be a monitoring program to show that that 260,000 is okay, if it is. And if it isn't, then, in other words, right now we don't have the option for Plan 1. To move well, there's forward. no discharge. So the foot, a footnote saying, at the present time, there is not a designated, a designated dis right. discharge. discharge. True. That's true. Well, there, well, there's 260,000 right, gallons. But it's not available for this. Right. It's not available for this. Exactly. Yeah. So the issue is, is that this is contingent on that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, otherwise, it's it's as viable as a shellfish because you can't, you can't run the water anywhere. Okay? <laughs> unless, you, <laughs> unless you have a new site, then, then yeah. the costs would go yeah. through a huge, yeah. you know, thing. Well, wait a second. If, if there's two hundred sixty thousand available, and this is only twenty five thousand, no, 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 no. Two sixty is committed for. It's for, allocated. That's a little pond. Oh. It's not available. Oh, that's oh, the oh, little okay. pond right. service. Okay. Yeah, right. Right. it's the same. It's two sixty right. and two. I mean, it's what right. what the right. okay. the, the estimate is for for the little pond sewer right. service area. So, so I think there needs to be some provision. You know that sure. this is not necessarily. Yeah. I think there is, but you're right. That, I mean, in yeah. Plan One, as described in the Wright Pierce document, it specifically states that. Right, mm -hmm. but I think in the table. But as it a would footnote, be, it makes sense. I think that Plan One uh, wording that perhaps said Plan One would be contingent on the town acquiring, identifying. Identifying, identifying and acquiring or whatever. Not even acquiring. Identifying. Well, how about just a discharge? The availability because right. we don't have to. Yeah. So this, what I'm going to say is, right. Plan One is contingent. Con <clears throat> plan One is contingent upon the availability of a discharge location. Right. Well, should that even be hidden in a footnote, or should it be in the main paragraph somewhere capacity. in the text? The, the, the question is, though, in this is that there, this is a, the cost estimates here based on running it to right here to Main Street or something, yeah. right? And no, and, and that's it. No, that's, is, that, do they have a cost there's a line issue. Right? In, there is in, a in, line yeah. item yeah, that we went over and over about with Wright Pierce that has... Who's the, we? The IA Working Group. Oh, okay. The IA Working Group, not the Oyster Pond Working Group. I mean, the, the Oyster Pond Oyster Working Pond. Group. So okay, well, I don't know who we is, okay, because I'm not part of that we, so I don't know who okay. we is. Well, the oyster pond. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Steve. Yeah. No. No. I know. I'm just saying. It's, that's all you have to say. Right. I just didn't know. You said we. I thought it was the imperial yeah, we. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But you're right. There's a cost factor that was worked out. That the I that the oyster pond working group. Yeah. Went back and forth with Roy Pearson because there are different ways of apportioning that cost, and the way it was apportioned was based on the cost of site seven. Maybe a low estimate, but a cost for Site 7 <clears throat> based on the right. GHD tech memo for Site 7 and a confirmation right. on the actual costs from the wastewater right. department. So, so, so that's your third line here, construction-disposal. That's that 290000 is to prepare the discharge site for this 25,000 gallons. Yes, what, what it would be based on Site 7 costs. Okay. And Based that's documented in, in the answers from Wright Pierce. Right. So they, they talk about that. And so right. what's nice about having this as a spreadsheet, if you want to add, if you want to come up with a different metric, and there are several metrics. Um, on page eight of this document, of, of what we sent around for the last meeting. So um, I want to just make sure. Page, page eight. Uh, yeah, I think it is. Not page eight, sorry. Discharge site costs, because we specifically asked them about what it. It's page, on page six. Right. Um, there um, were different ways, but it's explained how GHD came up with the number that they felt made sense to add a number, because before it was zero. Right, but the issue is, is we don't know if, if they, you might be able to develop site seven, but you might not be able to take the sewage there, is the thing. So, the untreated wastewater. 
Yeah. So, so the question is, is just to identify that this, there's a contingency here yep. that is. Yeah. No, I think we're going to do that. That's exactly yeah. what's going to happen. And, and yeah. In fact, I, I'm glad to see you both said what you did because now instead of saying that this foot shouldn't be in a footnote, I think the footnote should be on that line construction disposal. Yeah. I'm proposing yeah. That, yeah. that. That and yep. saying that yep. this is based on blah, 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 but we don't know this and um, it could be higher or lower right. depending on what's identified. If, yeah, and if there is a place, and if it turns out to be site <coughs> 10, you know, everything changes radically. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah the spectrum of, of possible sites yes. goes, goes from $40 million to put it out at Nobska. But that would to, be a to, portion. Yeah. <laughs> but to, that's... Uh, yeah, right. No, exactly. Two, but 200,000, if, if you can just squeeze it in up, uh, right. up inside seven. <laughs> but, but in looking at this and you do the cost comparisons, it looks like, oh, well, you know, um, right. the, the, the going yeah. to the wastewater treatment plant is still right. the... Right. And, and that number is totally speculative. Here, That's so right. All of them are to some extent, but... But this is... But I think that, that that's just something that yeah. can guide the reader sure. or the nope. in, in terms we're, of we're understanding the... So we just want to pull out the um, uncertainty mm -hmm. of the cost of the discharge because right. the other numbers are, are, are pretty close. Right. Yeah, I mean, within a, within yeah. twenty percent, yeah, and that's why when you look at these numbers, they're not far apart at all. They're neck and neck from a from a budgetary planning perspective. The sewer numbers and the IA numbers, you could almost call them the same number because these are planning estimates. I mean, they're right Pierce, well-documented planning estimates, but they're planning estimates. But you're absolutely right. The disposal is the outlier. It is the most uncertain of all these numbers. Right, but well, that's just because uh, otherwise, if I look at it, I say, well, you know, even in a way, they may not be equal, okay? <laughs> because right, right. Of the, we don't know is this the point. This is a there major is uncertainty. 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 But it's right. a tiny major flow. Uncertainty. But it's that's a tiny flow. But it's a tiny flow. But it's 25,000 gallons. But it might cost a, a lot to do it. Right. Or it, <laughs> might, or it, might, cut, or it might cost nothing to yeah. do it. They might, they might find yeah. that they could squeeze 25,000 in under the current allocation. For exactly. We don't know. No, we don't know. Well, the assumption here is they can't. The they cannot. Right. right. No, they, can't. They, they, no, they, they, they can they, squeeze they, it in at this price. Well, uh, that, that, uh, that's assuming that the cost uh, of 2.7, which is the cost of site 7, this was this volume's allocation of that cost. Is what, where that came from. But but, but you still guess. you still need to acquire more acreage for this twenty five thousand. It's a guess. It's another disposal another pit or parcel. something in that mm. area. Okay, mm. whatever it is. Okay, whatever they calculated, if the environmental impacts can accommodate it, then okay. But if they can't, based on the the, the monitoring program, then something else would have to be done, and that's an unknown. That's unknown. at this point. Yep. Right. Okay. What happens next? I think our plan was to, if there are no other changes requested of the committee, mm -hmm. you should vote to send it, to approve it subject to those three changes. And we send that to Ray Pierce. And what they do is they take it and they finalize the alternatives analysis document. Mm -hmm. right. So are we still going to end up with three plan fives? Yes. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Depend in large part on the cost of capital. Uh, and that, that's the, huge. the cost of capital yeah. is in there to make it an apples to apples comparison. Right. We can't make that determination right. now. Um, we have a fairly optimistic monitoring program that we believe is tenable based on our discussions with DEP. But <clears throat> Wright Pierce wants to have a conservative one in there. Based because on they're based engineers. Based on their idea of what the current DDP yeah. outlook is. So I think we need to have those three, and I think it's a very transparent way of comparing yeah. these oh, things. Oh, no, I think it's good go, the way it's laid forward. out. Right. Thanks. Okay, uh, the, well, we can the, actually... Well, I'll make the motion just, then to... Just, uh, just, yeah. just one more thing. <laughs> the, uh, um, the other element in this that's the, a bit of an outlier still is, is should phosphorus removal become a... Whether it's regulated or not a factor with the I mean then the cost really gets a little bit well the thing we learned about yeah. phosphorus is yeah. that 
the state has a lot of ponds and lakes that have phosphorus issues, and they just put alum in it. I mean, it's not like it requires them to sewer the whole place. Right. Uh, you, can, you can address phosphorus. Well, do what we're doing in Falmouth, well, in Ashima. Ashima, Ashima Pond. Pond. Right. That's good. right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so it, it, there is a existing tested means of addressing it that doesn't involve sewering. So, so is, is, but the is, that turn, is the water turnover in those ponds similar to that in Oyster Pond? Oyster Pond, the turnover is about once a year. Well, in other words, if but isn't if you were in a talking about estuary that was open to the sound, that was really flush, there wouldn't be a phosphorus problem. But right. if there was, alum wouldn't be a way of treating it because you'd have to have eighteen wheelers pulling up every day because <laughs> it would all be going out into the sound. The, so and, and I'm not sure at alum LS ridiculous level is is oyster pond comparable to the freshwater well, pond. Well, I'm not sure that it is. But, but, but there's such but, a small linkage with the oyster pond and the sound anyway. Uh, presently, I mean, a right. lot of things could be changed. Well, I know, but water flows through the sand, too. It doesn't it's have to go it's through the inlet. It's also pretty undetermined whether phosphorus is an issue. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, no, the, the only thing is, is that if there is another alternative, such as, see, this is talking about removing it right. uh, through a mechanical chemical process versus alum, <laughs> you know, so. Mm -hmm. You know, so we see an equivalency here because the, the reports from the um, from OPET, Oyster Pond Environmental Trust, are that phosphorus is an issue, has been calculated by MBL scientists to be an issue. That that's not actually. It's very. It is. If you read the read, the, ask even ask Wendy. You can check. She's not here today, but you can ask Wendy. She, uh, has she raised I, I thought they've said the, the opposite. I'm just asking. I'm not sure. I, I'm, no, I don't understand right. that they have said the phosphorus is an issue. They have. I can well, look. I have it here. I can look it up. And this see. document yeah. lists it as significant for, for sewer treatment and minor, minor, minor for Plan 5. So, so the issue is addressed. It's mm -hmm. Well, no, the equivalent cost per pound for sewer is $704. No. Uh, per pound and for the sewer and eight thousand dollars or whatever it is here six to eight thousand six, six to eight thousand for, for phosphorus removal right yeah. for phosphorus right yeah. per pound yeah. so I, I I'm just well I think it's partly because there's so little phosphorus in the wastewater anyway that goes into a septic system normally no, I, I think the, I think the only concern yeah. with oyster pond and phosphorus was on the occasions when the salinity goes way down. Yeah. Which is a separate problem which needs to be cured for its own sake. And, and that but yes, needs to be considered as a cost to the town to maintain the salinity by proper dredging of the lagoon and the river. Well, and rebuild that weir that now is limiting. And right now, right now, only it, on It's not the weir. It's that the, the river and the, I don't want to get off into it, but it's right. there. The river, once the river gets, if you have a higher dam downstream of an upstream dam, the upstream mm -hmm. dam no longer matters. Right. Oh, and so that, what you're saying is there's a, a, enough sediment there that right. it's not getting there. Right. <coughs> but if, if the salinity is maintained appropriately, which you want to do for a lot of reasons, then the phosphorus doesn't matter. Okay. But it is in here anyway, so. No, I'm just saying that it is something that I have the report in front of me, but um, I won't go through the details now. But there is a factor that if nitrogen is under control, then it turns out the phosphorus loading uh, becomes the limiting factor. So it's, it's. Is that the Woods Hole Group report? That's the appendix in the right, right. Pierce? No, this is the. Uh, I'm not. I can't remember about the appendix, but I did look. If you look at the OPET site, it's there's a report. Is that the student? The student report? No. Yeah, it was published in the biological bulletin. Whatever. Okay, so it was the student <laughs> semester in environmental SES studies. Student. Yeah, it was an SES student report. Okay. I believe. But there were several of the MBL scientists involved. So, anyway. Um, well, well let's see. It's. Uh, Okay. Here, here, well, basically, it has. Um, wait, 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 let's get a motion on the floor here. Right? Yeah, I was going to move that we proceed with 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 the with the set stated. I believe there were three changes that we yep. asked for that that we then forward this back to Wright Pierce for their reworking. Second. Oh. Moved and seconded. Discussion. 
Well, it's, yeah, well, I, it's just this, I, 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 I still, well, I mean, okay, we can leave it. it, it it's, I think it's okay because it shows this, out, this huge cost. Yeah, it's right there. Yes. Right. Yeah, so the huge cost is here the way it stands, and that means the alum thing may not be, it's not shown here, but it could be a, a factor that yep. someday, okay. Yeah, All right. I, I okay. think it's important for this study to move forward. We've, we've held up for quite a while on, on working through the details of this alternatives analysis, and I, I think we're far enough along that, that other issues, if they really become significant, can be folded in at the next step. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Yes, aye. Have it. Okay. Thank you. Report of members yeah. and staff. Oh, good. The staff has a report on last night's meeting. Sure. Um, last night we had our, uh, at least we believe, the final uh, shellfish working group meeting for this phase, which was the phase where we looked <coughs> at um, defining rotational aquaculture license sites and delineating specific areas and specific estuaries where those may be permitted. The next step is the permitting and the implementation, and there are a number of questions that people have raised about how would these sites be allocated, um, would there be ways to help people get started, I mean there's 10 or 11 uh, questions that need to be answered in the next step, and so um, the, the meeting went incredibly well. The, uh, Brett, there was great attendance, there was a, a bunch of commercial, um, Marine and Environmental Services that actually sent a letter to every commercial harvester. And because of the press coverage, most of the residents who are now here and have been, I mean, once you get it in the front page two or three times, people <laughs> start to realize there's something going on. So we had a bunch of people from Great Pond. Also had received a number of, town hall received a number of phone calls. So we were able, we being I was able, and Peter Johnson Staub was able to call people and, and get people in. And general, and I think specifically, Bourne's Pond and Wakoy was a win. People were were f the commercial harvesters were, were uh, uh, supportive and agreed that the refined areas were good, were, were appropriate. And then there was some discussion in Great Pond, and there are a couple of additional areas to be removed, one additional area that kind of goes around the corner of Titicat Path. So we had removed mm -hmm. Titicat Path, and now we're removing more of Titicat Path, and we need to bring some of the area farther away from moorings. So um, those changes will be made. The next step is to rewrite the draft plan, which will include all these questions that people have been asking, and give it to um, town manager's office to basically just present as an update to the board of selectmen, um, so that they can see what the areas are and we can talk, have another meeting. <coughs> but I think it went well, and there was a lot. And I think this public, I mean, it's been a very public, public process, and I think that's what it's supposed to be. So. I feel like it's been good. It's, it was good. <coughs> and I got a couple of thank yous by email today. <laughs> from one from a resident and one, two from the commercial harvesters. Perfect. So I feel like that's good. Any other reports from members of staff? Oh, I, I don't have a, I, I don't have a report, but does anybody have a report from the, what was it, the, the meeting in, in Hyannis about? Uh, the one cake? Oh, the one yeah, cake. The, Two, one Cape yeah, and the 208 two, plan. Two of you went. You I, I attended. I was there most of the day. Anything new? Uh, <laughs> anything new? Well, I think the most newest thing w is an almost, um, and that is the towns of Sandwich, Barnstable, and Mashby have been working together because they share a watershed, um, and uh, they have been working on an IMA, Intermunicipal Agreement. Mm -hmm. um, they were not able, they said they're in the final stages of doing this negotiating uh, and that the document would s soon be available for, for general use, but they talked about the process uh, and um, the, they said, um, that they made several points was to do this, uh, we should have the decision makers in the room. So it was the town managers, mm -hmm. the water superintendents, uh, or the wastewater superintendents. Um, that, was the, that was the first point. The second was they never met unless all of them were there. Uh, and they decided you don't have to solve every problem. There are a few things that we have left for, <coughs> for later decisions. 
they discussed at length how you divide up the percentages. There are apparently three different models for calculating. There's the Cape Cod Commission model, <laughs> and there's the uh, MEP model, as to exactly how much of the watershed is sandwiches and barnstables and so on. So they finally decided, they took all the models and then just averaged it. And that's how they, that's how they came out with the conclusion because that has a dollar amount. Um, and then they made one other point, which I thought was interesting, and it was that it was to be revisited every five years. Um, so that uh, if turned out the development that had been proposed for, you know, sandwiches 6% of the whole watershed, but if it turns out they put up a, you know, 200 room hotel, uh, it might change it. So every five years you could re revisit uh, an area um, to, to see whether it, the water, the percentages of, of water use and therefore nitrogen generation mm -hmm. um, were, were um, in sync. So I, it, it just, it, they, they gave a very positive message uh, and this is sort of been gonna become a template or it's certainly something that the town Falmouth we'll need to look at when we deal with block weight. So was it the commission that made that presentation? Uh, that presentation was um, made actually by, well, that was the uh, by Sandwich and Mashby. They, they had general speakers and then they had breakout sessions. Uh, so it was referenced in the general meeting, but then the specifics came out in the, in the panel presentations. It was very well attended. Um, they also had a new feature, uh, which was they had a separate room and they had vendors. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> vendors doing anything with wastewater. So IA systems were there. George Hoyfelter was <laughs> intercepted you as you came in. <laughs> so he had all his things out there. Uh, and uh, so it was, uh, it, was, it was quite a, a, a lively scene. It was, it was interesting. Thank you. Any other reports or comments uh, from anyone else on the committee? Okay, if not, we'll uh, vote okay. minutes in the prior meeting. Thank which you, Christine. Oh, no. Oh, I'm fine. I was just thanking her for the report. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're welcome. I <laughs> move that they be accepted as written. Okay, okay motion's been made and John. seconded. Second. <laughs> the minutes of June 15th uh, be accepted as written. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Guys have it. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. See you at the end.